Looks like someone stepped on that dang Hot Wheels car. Got the wheels all bent out of whack. That thing needs an alignment. Are the wheels supposed to be tilted like that? Camber is without a doubt one of the most controversial topics when it comes to cars and modifying them. We've all seen the stance cars and the videos of the stance cars of the excessive amounts of camber struggling to get over the Walmart speed bump. And it gets people all sorts of wound up. Talking about how it makes a car useless and it literally serves no purpose other than to get those big old goofy wheels to fit. And while yes, that can be the use and purpose of adding a ton of negative camber to a vehicle. It can also serve a more functional purpose as well when it comes to performance. So let's talk about some of the positive uses for negative camber. The use of negative camber can be found in a variety of different motorsports from autocross, drifting, and even track racing all the way from your HPD events to your GT class racing. Just like everything else when it comes to motorsports, there has been a ton of time and money invested into figuring out how to get the most performance out of a vehicle and make it go around a track better and faster. Suspension is obviously one of those key areas of interest when it comes down to setting up and optimizing a car. You can have the lightest and most powerful car on the grid, but if you're not feeling connected to the ground, none of that really matters, and dialing in a vehicle's camber can play a crucial role in this. Now when we start talking about introducing negative camber into a vehicle, we are talking about pulling in the top of the wheel closer to the inside of the car, adding what is considered a negative camber angle. A neutral or zero camber angle would mean that your wheel and tire is sitting perfectly vertical with zero angle, and a positive camber angle would mean that the top of your wheel or tire is actually pointing outwards to the outside of the vehicle. Typically, this is adjusted using a camber plate at the top of your strut or damper, or by adjusting a control arm depending on the type of suspension your vehicle is equipped with. When you start pulling in the top of your wheel and tire with negative camber, you're going to be decreasing the amount of total contact patch that your tire is going to be making with the road when your wheels are pointed straight. Now, wait a minute, that sounds like a bad thing. Why would you want less tire contact with the road when you're supposed to be going faster? Well, the simple answer here is it all comes down to how your car is going to handle while cornering. If you were to go out to the track in a car with zero or neutral camber set up all around, after a session or two, you'll start to notice the outside of your front tire specifically are going to be taking more of a beating than the inside and middle of your tires. This is because during things like hard cornering, the weight transfer and rotation of your front tires to turn is naturally going to throw more pressure onto the outside of your tires. Meaning that when you're in that turn, you are aren't using the full contact patch of your tires when you're turning, which is when you would really want to use and need that grip the most. When you start to introduce a bit of negative camber into your suspension, you are accommodating for that shift in weight and the amount of pressure that is going to want to be thrown to the outside of your tires. Adding in the correct amount of negative camber into your suspension helps you keep a larger contact area and more grip when going through those corners, helping balance that pressure throughout the entire tire instead of just the outside. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to see track cars running around Road America with negative 20 degrees of camber. In this type of motorsport, you're typically only going to be seeing anywhere between negative one to negative three degrees of camber being used. And in most cases, you probably won't even notice a drastic visual difference. But what about these silly drift cars and their excessive amount of camber that they're running in the front? Essentially, the same principle is being applied here, but instead of turning the wheels into the turn to create grip in the front, you are counter steering while in a drift and with a much wider steering angle than you would normally input while going around the track. If you were to look at your typical drift car setup, you'll notice that the front wheels usually have quite a bit more negative camber to them than the rear wheels. Since we are dealing with a much larger steering angle in this motorsport, we are trying to create as much contact patch with a neutral camber angle anywhere between three quarter to full lock of those front wheels, which is going to require much more camber when they're sitting straight to do so. The front half of a drift car is doing a ton of work while drifting and having control and authority of the front of the car is just as important as the rear. Keeping your happy little ass pointed in the right direction so you don't smoke the person in front of you or the wall that you're trying to stay away from. Now, there is a complete science that goes into setting up the suspension in cars like this that includes much more than just adding a ton of camber to the front, but that'll have to be for another video. Now, with all that, every car and every setup is going to be different when it comes to setting up the 
proper amount of camber to be beneficial for you and your car. And while it may sound counterintuitive, getting an alignment is actually the best way to dial in your camber settings. Believe it or not, you can go get an alignment that includes having negative camber. And this way you can make sure that you're getting the exact angle that you are looking for and ensure that it is even on both sides of the car. Unfortunately, adjusting camber on the fly isn't really the easiest thing to do effectively. Can it be done? Sure. The markings on the camber plates are a great reference, but the slightest misalignment can impact the amount of camber that your wheel has quite a bit. And if you're just eyeballing it, chances are pretty slim of you getting it perfect. So if you're serious about getting your car set up perfectly for you and your needs, do a bit of research to see what other people have found success with. The internet is a fantastic tool that will more than likely get you to a great starting point that you can then tweak around with to suit your needs the best. And of course, if you're in the process of getting your car set up for the track, whether that's an autocross course, your local drift track, or maybe something like VIR, and now you're looking for some new suspension components, tires, wheels, or performance parts, remember, you can mod your car at martiniworks.com.